Pythagorean theorem. Where did the Pythagorean theorem originate from? Pythagorean. Pythagorean. Uh, when you say his name, it's actually Pythagoras. All right, the, the person was Pythagoras, and he comes from which country? Greece. Greece, ancient Greece. And he came up with the following relation. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And here's what we say. In any right triangle, if A and B are the lengths of the legs and C is the length of the hypotenuse, then A squared plus B squared equals C. Well, first of all, you, have to, you need to know what, the lengths, what they mean by legs and what they mean by hypotenuse. So when we mean hypotenuse, what are we talking about in a right triangle? Yes? The longest line of the angle. OK, the longest line. Where is it opposite of? Well, not necessarily. It's not necessarily the longest. Like the base, the hypotenuse. Right. It's the hypotenuse. Is, what, how is it related to this little symbol here? What does this little symbol here mean? It means right angle. It means right angle. It means right angle. And so how is this related to the right angle symbol? Is it right beside it? Is it on this side of it? It's not adjacent because adjacent means beside. So where is it? No, it's not adjacent. Seven, this side is adjacent to that angle. This side is adjacent to that angle. This C is opposite to that right angle. And that's what the hypotenuse is. It's opposite of the right angle in a right angle triangle. So the relation between the two sides and the hypotenuse is as follows. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. That's what you need to remember, and you need to know how this relates to your triangle, your right triangle. That's what you'll need to know to figure these out. Any questions? Our homework, all right? So page 510, number four. They're asking, they're giving you a right triangle. OK, it's drawn a little funny, but basically this is a right triangle because of that symbol right there. Um, the two sides are 7 and 7, and they're asking you to find the side that there is no value for. And in this case, it's C, the hypotenuse. Find the length of the third side. So how do we find it? What do we do? What formula do we use? Yes, Jessica. You, um, put, you substitute the 7s into the A's. That's right. That's exactly right. Glenna, go ahead. Put the 7s in. Put Drop on the one knee. There you go. And we've got the 7s in for A. So it'll be 7 squared plus 7 squared equals C squared. OK? And 7 squared equals what? 49. Right. So it's 49 plus 49 equals C squared. Equals C squared. 98. 98 equals C squared. And then what are you going to have to use to figure that out? Oh, you have to, um, you have to try and figure out what times what, or what, what is the number squared that equals 98? Yeah, so uh, we've got the square root. Well, well, basically, what you've got it. The, here's the easiest thing to do. Now that you know a lot about square roots, you're basically going to find the square root of both sides. And this is something you're going to need to know right till the end of the year. You're going to practice this a lot because you're going to use it with quadratic equations. You're trying to find C. But to find it, you need to take the square root of both sides. So the square root, sorry, that was the wrong place. Square root of C squared equals, now whatever you do on one side, you got to do on the other. That's math for you. Right, Omave? So you take the square root of c squared, and it equals c. And then on the other side of the equation, square root of 98. What is the square root of 98? Anybody have a calculator? 9.9. Good. Right, so just write it over here, I guess. c equals, now c equals plus or minus 9. Point what? 9.89, let's say. 9.89, OK? 9.89. Now, it's plus or minus, but do we need to worry about the minus here? No. Why, did you put Why not? Well, because when you, when you solve a, a square root, like we did with absolute value, you had a plus and a minus case. Because okay, two things will satisfy this. If I put in negative 9.89, it would get squared, and it would satisfy this equation. So that's why it could be plus or negative. But the problem says, find the length of this side. Are there any sides of triangles with negative lengths? No, no way. So our answer is not minus, but only plus. We don't even have to put this there anymore. That's our answer. The side length is, these two sides are 7, and this is 9.89. And that's proportional. That's more or less right. It makes sense. If you think about a triangle that looks like this, it makes sense. The hypotenuse is going to be slightly longer, I mean, you know, more or less, if the two sides are seven, then it's going to be about that. So are there any questions? No, is this going to be on the test? Yes, it will be on the test, not, not the little review. So this is number seven. 
And it's a little bit different than the last question, but it's still similar because this is a right triangle. We know that because of this symbol here, the 90 degree sign. This angle is 90 degrees. That's what that symbol means. Now, the hypotenuse this time is marked. It's A. It's not a C. What's missing is the B, that side, the adjacent side, the side beside the right angle sign. This one is given as 4 root 3. We've got the hypotenuse, which is 8. How do we know this is the hypotenuse? That was the first thing that got people confused, is they weren't sure which one is which. Which one is A, which one is C? Yeah. And how do you know which one is the hypotenuse? The opposite. It's the opposite. Opposite of this sign here. That's which one is the hypotenuse. And it's 8. So we use our handy formula that that. that the Pythagorean theorem right here, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, and we plug in the missing values. It's really simple. You've got your a squared, it's got to be that, 4 root 3 squared, plus b squared. We don't know what b is, so we leave it as b squared. And then 8 squared, which is your c squared, is right there. So this is equal to a, and that's equal to c. You just need to know which one is which. Now we go ahead and figure this out. That's equal to what? 4 root 3 squared is equal to 16 times 3. I hope you know how to do that. 16 what? times 3, because root 3 times root 3 is 3. Wait, Just put 16 what? times 3, okay? Put 16 times 3. Because, oh, because put your 16 times 3, but do it from the side here so that people can see the root you two. Come, from, come over here. There you go, that's good. 16 times 3, because 4 times 4. Can I explain why? Yeah. Plus b squared equals 64. Yeah. Wait, I'm going to... Because he's going to play in a second here. Okay, wait, because, okay. Say it, wait. Oh, yeah. And the 4 times 4 equals 16. So there you go. Now it's 48. 48 plus b squared equals 64. You subtract 48 on both sides. You get b squared equals... Negative 40? Yeah, negative 48 on both sides. Negative So it's equal to what? What's 64 minus 48? b squared equals... Negative no, no, 64 minus 48 is negative 40. Oh, it's 12. It's equal to uh, 16. It's equal to 16. B squared equals 16. What do we have to do on both sides now? B equals 4. Yes, you take the square root of both sides, good job, in red, and you get B equals plus or minus 4, but of course, it can't be negative. Right? In the book, it says that if it's the square root of the side, our answer here, after you've gone through everything, is we take the square root of both sides, b equals 4. It's got to be positive because it's a triangle with positive lengths. Uh, 4 is the length of the side. All right? Now, the only difference of, in the homework, what you get is sometimes you get, you don't have a triangle down. They just give you the values. Well, you have to figure it out by drawing a triangle yourself and then figuring it out from there.